Now it's time to look at one of the biggest pillars of internet marketing of all, SEO. SEO is search engine optimization, and this basically means that you're trying to get your website to show up in the search results. Of course, you're not going to be able to show up high in every search result, so this is where keywords and targeting come in. A keyword is essentially a word or phrase that people are going to search in order to find your site. When people go shopping online, they're almost always start with Google. And when they start with Google, they will begin by searching for the thing that they want. It very often, this will mean that they search for something like buy hats online. If you can target that precise phrase so that your page is the top result, you will not only be able to reach the right demographic, but you'll be able to target them at the precise moment they're actually planning on buying something. The same thing happens when someone looks for information. They might search for how to lose weight after Christmas, or they might search for fitness articles. Again, you can bring more people to your site and that way hopefully create more loyal followers simply by making sure your pages come up as top results for those terms. So SEO has the huge advantage of being highly targeted and allowing you to reach anyone rather than just people who are your followers or who are part of the same network as your followers. The only problem is that SEO is also arguably more complicated than the other forms of marketing we've looked at so far. It's never guaranteed. That is to say you can spend years doing SEO or pay the very biggest SEO service in the world and still not see any improvements. Let's take a look at why that is and how to give yourself the best chance of success. In order to get to the top of Google, the aim is to try and understand how Google works, how Google decides which sites are worthwhile and how you can manipulate those factors in order to move your site to the top. Google works using spiders or robots. These are small programs that search the web by following from one link to the next. Each time they find a new website, they add it to a giant index and will assess the subject matter and the quality of the site by looking at who is linking to the page, how the page is laid out and what the subject of the content appears to be. If we knew precisely how Google's algorithm worked, then we could get to the top of the search results with guaranteed certainty. As we don't know this though, all we can do is make educated guesses and hope that these get us to the top of Google. When Google first became the dominant search engine, the algorithm was fairly straightforward and was generally quite well understood by marketers. Back then we knew that Google found sites by following links on sites already in the index. Google thought of a link as testimony. The more people link it to your site, the better your site must be. Google attempted to match search terms with the content on your pages. If you repeated the same phrase often enough, you stood a better chance of ranking for that term. Back then, it was easy enough to manipulate Google into doing your bidding. All you had to do was to create a website with lots and lots of content, repeat the same keywords over and over again, and get lots of other sites to link to you. It was literally a matter of whoever worked the fastest could get to the top of Google the quickest. Unfortunately, though, this also led to some very bad practices. People would stuff keywords into their text, repeating the same few phrases over and over again. People would pay for links. People would steal content and spin it, you know, swap words for synonyms, and generally, Google's results started to become dominated by spam. So, Google clamped down and introduced some smarter rules and algorithms. These updates to its system were known as Penguin and Panda and really shook up the internet marketing community. Now Google is much smarter when it comes to looking for content and now values quality over quantity to a large degree. A few examples of the changes. First off, Google will now penalize websites for keyword stuffing. A density of 1-2% to is generally recommended. 
Google now prefers long-form content and will reward it. Google will penalize sites that associate with spam sites. Low-quality links are worthless. Links from established authorities mean much more. A single link from Harvard is worth a million links from spam sites. Google now understands synonyms and related terms and will look for you to have written around a subject. Google penalizes links that are from sites that aren't related to yours. Google clamps down hard on paid links. Google clamps down hard on stolen or reworked content. Google can now monitor how long people spend on a website or page. If your visitors are only staying for a second before leaving, Google will take this to mean that your site doesn't offer any real value and you will be penalized. This sudden change resulted in a lot of sites being removed from Google altogether, which badly hurt many businesses. As you can imagine, this caused quite a lot of outcry. But what's important to remember is that website owners are not the customers Google is catering to. Google is catering to users who want to use Google in order to find high-quality content. Thus, Google's main and only objective is to ensure that the content it shares is relevant and interesting to the people searching for it. So, what's the best way to handle good SEO? Simple. Make sure you are providing great, relevant content. When you do this, you are aligning yourself with Google's goals. Therefore, every change Google makes will ultimately help more people to find your site. Meanwhile, the sites that try to spam Google or trick it will only be damaged each time that Google has an update. So, with all that said, how do you go about carrying out SEO for your site in this day and age? We'll cover that in part two.